The name change of uh, Femto Forum to uh, Small Cell Forum is a really exciting event in the industry. You know, it seems like a simple thing just to change the name, but it really represents uh, an increase in scope and breadth uh, for the forum. So the funny thing is we really haven't changed what we're doing. We really were starting to address these increased areas such as pico cells, micro cells, metro cells, and rural areas. So it made logical sense for us to change the name to represent this increase in scope that we have within the forum. Yeah, one of the most interesting products is this uh, ubiquitous uh, 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 small cell, and this has the, um, the edge, the cloud edge server. So the example given, this is a collaboration with Intel and ubiquitous, and uh, the idea being, you know, you might be at a football game, and uh, everybody's in there with their mobiles, and everybody's doing the instant replay again and again and again, which represents a lot of data for the mobile operator. So very expensive for the mobile operator, uh, and then the, the experience for the users tends to go down when everybody's grabbing a whole bunch of data instantaneously at, this, at the same time. So this, uh, this cool product actually allows you to um, cache the, uh, the data out to the edge of the network. So it's a cloud edge server and it's, uh, it's a very cool product. Small cells in the public. Uh, the idea behind a lot of this technology is that the public shouldn't even know they exist. We want to try to make small cells as simple as possible because that's really the key to mass adoption. So one of the things I'm working on within the forum is the whole services area. And people say, oh, well, you can use Wi-Fi, you can use small cells, you can use this or that. The idea is that um, what small cells give you with our new integrated Femto Wi-Fi feature gives you is the ability for the network to be intelligent enough to service the consumer the best way possible at any given moment in time. So what I mean by that is in a Wi-Fi zone, you might have 10 Wi-Fi access points, a lot of interference, the service level may be slow, but in that same area, you have a small cell that gives a really nice level of service. So in that case, the network should be smart enough to not go over the Wi-Fi, but to go over the small cell. So what we're talking about here are some of the new applications that are coming out compared to today's applications. So today, the story is all about coverage. In, uh, in the U.S., as an example, about 23% of people have a coverage problem, either at home or at work. When you're talking about a couple hundred million uh, mobile subscribers, that's a pretty si significant number of people that have a coverage issue. So the real value proposition today, the killer application of small cells, is better coverage. But what we're working on now are new services. So this is a way to allow small cells to appeal not to 23% of the population, but to 100% of the population. So as an example, a cool application I have right behind me here is a demonstration from uh, Telecom Italia Mobile where you're using small cells in an art museum. So you walk up to this painting here by Raphael and on your smartphone you get information about the painting. You walk up to this other uh, painting of Venice and you get all the information on that. So these are some of the possibilities with new services enabled by small cells. What are some of the most exciting femtosone services that I can think of? Well, there's really a whole list of them. In fact, uh, at the show here, we've got about seven different demos from vendors. We talked about the uh, Cloud Edge service. We talked about the Art Space demo. Uh, we've got another demo behind me here that's uh, what we call um, uh, information alerts. So you walk into your home and it gives you a reminder, like a home reminder service, feed the fish, water the plants. Why is that interesting? I can program that on my phone today uh, on my calendar, but the reality of it is those are time-based reminders. What the, uh, the small cell capabilities give you is presence-based reminders. So if I'm at the store and it reminds me to feed the fish, it doesn't really do the fish any good because I can't do that at that moment in time. By the time I get home, I might forget about that. So the idea about presence-based reminder services, when I walk into the house, tell me, oh, it's Thursday, got to feed the fish, and the fish are much happier with this type of an application. Another cool application that we're talking about is the whole uh, connected home services. So one of my favorite ones in connected home is controlling the heat and the air conditioning. So I live in a hot climate uh, and where I live we use a lot of air conditioning which can be quite expensive in the summertime. So uh, I had one of those old analog thermostats, you know, you program it to whichever temperature you like. Um, the issue is that sometimes you go out of the house and you forget to, to change it. So what you can do is you can invest in a, uh, a time-based. So I went and spent a couple hundred dollars and now I have one that, you know, at six in the morning it makes it cooler and then it, uh, when I leave for work, you know, maybe at nine in the morning, uh, you know, it, it turns it up. So it, it's really good. It saves uh, some money on the aircon. But the reality of it is, is my life is not based on a time schedule. I'm here all week. So if I left home and forgot to reprogram, I'm wasting energy, so the planet is uh, less green in that case. So with, with presence-based services using uh, small cells, you have the ability to control things based on presence, lights, um, air conditioning, heat, uh, devices around the home, even security systems. Some uh, vendors are showing uh, systems that can 
track mobile phones and set off a uh, high definition camera when unknown mobiles are in the vicinity of the home. What are some of the steps that operators can uh, take to increase uh, small cell deployment? Uh, well, initially, uh, the small cells are being deployed today as a coverage solution, so it's a huge customer retention tool. One of the biggest reasons why consumers leave their existing mobile operators due to poor coverage. So right out of the box, the uh, small cell has a great uh, customer retention capability to provide brilliant coverage, five bar coverage, great data experience, great voice coverage. Um, on top of that, what a lot of mobile operators are doing are bundling the services. So in Japan with NTT Docomo, for example, they bundle their small cell with their uh, DSL. Same thing with SoftBank in Japan. So if you have the, uh, the uh, small cell, they'll give you the, uh, the DSL line for free. So there's a lot of bundling that goes on to create this triple play type of environment. Uh, in the future, you know, how can small cells become more adopted? As these uh, new small cell based services are available, we had a study that I showed earlier today, uh, commissioned Parks and Associates, about 2,000 consumers interviewed in different countries, Germany, Spain, UK, um, China, Japan, US, and um, what we found from these 2,000 people were that um, not everybody wants the same service, but more than 60% of consumers were interested in at least one uh, small cell based service. And out of those uh, consumers, a very high percentage were willing to pay um, upwards of uh, uh, $299, whether it was in you know, UK pounds or in uh, Spain, Euro, um, and then $999 for a bundle of their favorite three services. So now you have uh, something that appeals to everyone. It's not the same thing that everyone wants. One person may want home reminder service. Another person may, may want uh, you know, temperature control in the home. Another person is interested in security system. But the, uh, the idea is, is that there's a new revenue opportunity for the mobile operators, and there's a huge interest from the consumers. Greater than 60% said they were interested in these services. So uh, my agenda for the Small Cell Forum this year, one of the big things that's going on in the Small Cell Forum this week is the, uh, the name change, moving from the Femto Forum to the increased scope of Small Cell Forum that includes uh, Pico Cells, Micro Cells, Metro Cells, and uh, Rural uh, Enterprise, you know, Urban, um, and as well as residential. So that's a big, big item this week. We also have a couple of uh, announcements coming out around the whole um, developer area. So we're having a, a huge outreach to developer, to the development community to help uh, facilitate their ability to write new uh, small service applications. So have I been out and about uh, Mobile World Congress? Uh, I've been up to the uh, uh, Apps Planet, Applications Planet, which is Hall 7. Within Apps Planet, uh, GSMA has a one API apps garage, and we've got a number of really cool uh, small cell based applications that we're showing. We've got a new emulator that we've created, which is a developer toolbox, a developer sandbox, where you might have a developer based in China that wants to write an application for a mobile operator based in the UK. So it's really difficult for that person to get a femtocell, plug it in, do some you know, zone testing. So with this emulator that we've created, any developer anywhere in the world can write an app and test an app against the API for, um, for any mobile operator located anywhere in the world. So it's a really cool uh, item that we're showing up in uh, Hall 7. Another item in Hall 7 we're showing is a, um, in the Epona booth, uh, there's a location-based service. So we're showing somebody that's walking around the city and, and if they're getting close to the mobile phone store and their contract is ready to expire, it pushes them a message saying, hey, if you come in today by five o'clock, we'll offer you a special discount on a new mobile upgrade. So it's this whole time-based uh, uh, marketing that you can do when you have these small cells.